This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. So, the F4 Challenge. Instead of racing with front-engine, front-wheel drive cars, this is a race event exclusively for front-engine, rear-wheel drive cars. And, of course, in the beginner drivers once again. And for this race, we're going to buy a new car. We're going to buy something luxurious, something nice-looking. I'm going to go to Nissan. And I'm going to buy a Skyline. What Skyline, you might ask? This one. The Nissan Skyline Sedan 350 GT Type SP 2006. It looks really nice in that blue color. We're going to go with that. Yes. Front engine ass cheek wheel drive. No, isn't that... No, no, no. Th th that could work. A bejeweled knockoff. That wasn't an ad for me. The skyline looking kind of different. Uh, that's an Infinity G35. GT Auto Arrow? Let's go find out real quick. Since we're playing GT Auto Music anyways. Wrong area. So, tuning shop. Basically already shit that we know about and explained before. So, arrow parts. Let's see here. What can we do to this Skyline sedan? Okay. Oh, it has a special... Ooh! I like it. I actually like it. That's nice. That is actually really nice. Like, I like subtle wings like that too. And it's already like the... Wait, do, do the Infinities come with a wing link? No, they don't. Pretty sure that's like a factory thing. Like, maybe like a special trim or some shit. But yeah, that's really cool. So anyways, Grand Valley East, Trial Mountain Circuit, and Silverstone Grand Prix... So we go from the, I want to say the National Circuit to just the Grand Prix section, straight up. Yes, I like subtle wings. So we have a Camaro and M3. Well, uh, we lost this race. Doing this again. The Camaro in front is actually pretty quick, so we actually have to be on our toes here. We got held up by the ARC-7 in the beginning of the first attempt. Yeah, yeah, that upshift uh, at the start, it did cost us the win. We were messing around too much, which is surprising. I thought we were going to just easily win this, but we narrowly lost. This time we didn't get stuck behind the RX-7. Oh fuck. Damn super move the under braking. This car actually has pretty good traction out of the corners. Like it didn't it doesn't really wheel spin or anything. I was kind of hoping that the BMW in fourth now would have been a bit further ahead so we could have gotten a slip down the straight, but this works too. Four point six. See, I feel like he's closing in, but no, not really. Seriously, hope we don't have to upgrade this car. Okay, I think we got it now. Yep, we got it.
Now all we gotta do is hold him up. Yo, what's up, lamb? How's it going, dude? The streetcar breaks in this game? Uh... I feel like this game is more forgiving than sport is with, with streetcars, for sure. Like, it's so weird coming back to these games because, like, you can do so much more with these, whereas, like, the streetcars, like, you gotta break early as fuck. You can't really, you know, you can't really push too hard. Well, unless it's the Supra, which I learned because a fucking lamb told me. Well, he's, I, he told me this in secret, but I'm gonna tell you guys anyways, uh, because the Supra cup's over. You gotta be more aggressive to drive the Supra, and I was like, oh, that helped me at Bathurst. You're moving left to right into walls. Very nice. Sounds like you're having fun. I'm having fun too, but uh, just unwinding. Because uh, school's a bitch, and uh, I could finally stream. So, yeah. But anywho, uh, that's race number one <laughs> of three. I'm hoping the other races aren't as bad, because this thing's a this thing is a boat, right? But it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Trial Mountain is next. Pre- uh, Pre-Herman Tilking, of course. So the straights aren't as long and the chicane is not as sharp. I am going to miss this version of Trial Mountain, not going to lie. But the new version will be pretty cool too. Like, like if we get both the classic and the modern version in the game, that'd be pretty dope. But like, I don't really see it happening. As long as like... Okay, here's, here's what I'm thinking too. I I'm thinking about this, right? If... If the tracks have to be... F, you know, like, FIA spec 1 or grade 1, whatever the fuck it's called. Like, does that mean every single classic track is going to have to be revamped? I don't really think so either because I can't see a track like Tokyo Expressway being fucking FIA grade 1 in real life. There's no way in hell because, like, imagine some, imagine some motherfuckers crashing, like... It, it, imagine some fuckers crashed right before the hairpin in Tokyo South. Like, dude, no escape... No, no there's no escape road. No recovery vehicles are ever gonna get you know involved in, in getting people out without red flagging the race like it's just gonna be a nightmare you want to think that um i hope so just because like yes then like i'm a person that doesn't necessarily believe that oh you gotta keep every track the same blah 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 like no tracks change over time like like, like if if we if we really had the elitist not the elitist mentality the uh, nostalgia mentality of everything technically Laguna Seca like the corner right before the Ray Hall Street should be a, a flat out corner because in Gran Turismo two it was flat out Gran Turismo three it was flat out you know what I mean and so like all the tracks you know tracks in real life they change all the time not every time it's not like they change every year or something but like they're always constantly going through evolution so I don't really mind the fact that. We're getting something new every, you know, every once in a while. Like, it's a welcome change in my opinion. But it'd be nice if, like, we had... Kind of like in GT4 or in GT6 with, um... What's it called? Monza and Brands Hatch? If we had, like, Trial Mountain 90s or some shit. Or Trial Mountain 2010. And then Trial Mountain 2020. That'd be cool. You can just hop between both. But, like... We'll see what they do. Yeah, but you know what would be nice, Chris, if we had Fuji 70s? Imagine if we had Fuji 70s, bro. But the issue, too, is that we only had, well, one Can-Am car for, for Japan, and then two uh, Can-Am cars for the international release of GT4, so you really didn't have much options with Fuji 70s, realistically speaking. It would have been cool nonetheless. Imagine instead of just going T1 into the hairpin, you just, you know, just go into that whole fast fucking section. That would have been incredible. Pit teleportation works like in DZ Sport. Pinions can be faster than taking the two hairpins before the finish line. <laughs> you know, that's... That's a fair point. I mean, we'll see. I I agree with the whole, like, replay shit. Because, like, I think when we were playing... When we were LPing GT5 during the 24 hours of Nürburgring, I got stuck in the pits by another car. Yo, test drive with the raid! How's it going? Hi everybody from Test Drives Raid, my name is Elmer, aka The Moving Chicane. I do a lot of like arcade racers, sims, etc. If you like that kind of stuff, hit the follow button. If not, that's totally fine too. Thanks for supporting Test Drive because she is awesome.
Gonna go eat? Alright, Chris. See ya, man. Oh, fuck. The understeer. The boat. It's going fine, thank you. I'm literally just so loud. I gotta turn it down a bit. The ear rape. Come on, it's it's an obligation for me to take the jump. Like, I had to take the jump. Like, are you really playing a GT game, like an old school GT game, if you're not taking the big ass jump there? Like, no. Exactly. Always gotta take the jump, no matter what. But yeah, um, what was I saying? <laughs> I forgot. Nice finish. Thank you, King. <laughs> well, we got one more track to go. Silverstone Grand Prix. I think we'll be fine with this car. I just gotta not fuck up so much, really. That's crazy that the notification was that loud because my desktop audio is not even that loud on, on OBS. Can't take the jump in D7. Uh, who's stopping you from doing that? Apart from PD, of course, because they changed the track to have people avoid taking the jump. It's been years since you watched anyone play GTA. What, Rhino? Is that the uh, Rhino's the only person that I know who's actually played this game? Well, Rhino and Cat Cool, but that's it, really. Oh yes, Ender. Yes, uh, Ender Failure, I should say. Old School Laguna, dude. Old School Laguna was basically a fucking oval with with the corkscrew. Like, I think I watched one of the early '80s IndyCar races there, and I was like, wait a minute, where's the rest of the track? I was like, oh my god, this was literally an oval with the corkscrew in the final section. Dude, it, it basically was like Bahrain outer layout. What, what that's gonna be like now? That's pretty much what Laguna early 80s was. The Spiker? Dude, I've never driven the Spiker in any Gran Turismo game. Like, we'll change that when we play GT4. I'll use the Spiker for something because it's there and, you know, it's kind of tucked in the corner away from everything else. But, like,. No clipping out of bounds. Um, but I wouldn't know. Just because I've never driven that car. You know, all I want from GT7 is the Delta Wing. Oh, shit. Yeah, the Jag. There was an XFR in the other race. The one car that should have been premium, but it was standard for some reason, even though it never appeared in any other GT game, and those from 2010. Oh, shit. The Dorito Wing? <laughs> Bro, we're gonna use the Delta Wing in this. No, they didn't, Test Drive. Which is why, like... I'm wondering if they were supposed to, or if that was a car that they like... They were making, but because of time constraints, they literally just said, fuck it. Make it in the PS2 engine and then just throw it in there. Like, the Mazda Excella is another car that's like that. It didn't appear in any Gran Turismo until 5, and I was kind of like, huh? Which is a shame, because I really like the Excella. I want one in real life. The Speed 3. I want the Speed 3 in particular, but... Yeah, I mean... I thought about using the Excella in this game, but yeah, I don't know. Last minute edition? Most likely. Although I'm finally glad that PD is going and outsourcing their shit because like, I understand that, you know, they probably had the family mentality where it's like, all right, we want the same guys from Motor Tune GP working on GT Sport or GT7, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I get that. But at the end of the day, it's like, because of how far everything has come, because of how far technology has come, and like how much more demand there is to make new models and everything, it's like I'm just glad they started outsourcing their stuff. Like I read on GT Planet, they're outsourcing to like some company in India, which that company was were the ones who made like the 95 911 and I think the TRD Tundra. I don't know if it's a TRD Tundra, but I, I know it's a Tundra. It's a thick boy, but um. 
Those models look really good. I thought they were just made in-house by PD. Is it a supercar or a sports car? It's a 508. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's what I get for reading the damn chat. <laughs> I almost killed a man. I was gonna say, if that... I was gonna say, if that was like... I think a CLK or some shit, I was gonna say, we almost killed Papa. But, no. It's a newer Mercedes. Super Torx Theory? That's what I love about it, though. I, I, I love how, like, mad they are to drive. And they just look really damn cool. That would have been a nasty repair bill. Eh. Who cares? I mean, he's got to pay for it. I ain't paying for shit. And plus, bro, we have 10 million credits. I'm so fucking rich that I can buy anything I want. Until we actually get to, like, the International Beast section where I actually have to start money grinding because uh, no prize cards in this game. Well, Test Drive, that's the thing. Like, my my decision-making when it, when, it when it came to this game was, like, okay... Since there's no prize cars and this game is piss easy, I want to just use wacky combinations. Like, why not just go out of my comfort zone here? Not comfort zone, because I don't really give a shit about, you know... It's 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 an old-school Gran Turismo game. We're not, like, being competitive or nothing. We're just playing for fun. We're just LPing the game, after all. And, like, why not just go and use some dumb cars? Like, I want to I wanna do the 24 minutes of Le Mans with the fucking Delta Wing. That's going to be a nightmare and a half to drive, but... I'm willing to drive it. Yes, the Delta Wing. I mean, my goal for this game is to use mostly premiums, but I might dive into a standard car every, every once in a while. Just because. Drove a G37 at all. What was my first time driving in this game? It was cool. So, that's the F4 challenge out the way. And with that, we are... 15% of the way down. So, from what it looks like, it's one percentage for every championship we do. That's cool with me.